Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. I'm very excited to deliver this lecture. We're gonna talk about infections, whether it's viral, bacterial, or parasitic infections. How do we distinguish what type of infection that you might have? I highly suggest you stick around till the very end where I give you my clinical pearls. Here we go. Infection, bacteria, virus, parasites, white blood cells. So you can test in the blood what we call a complete blood count and with differential. Within that differential, you're gonna see white blood cells. So white blood cell or leukocytes are made up of two different types, granulocytes or and agranulocytes. Granulocytes are neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, which are produced in the bone marrow. And agranulocytes are monocytes, lymphocytes, which monocytes are produced in the bone marrow, lymphocytes are produced in the spleen, thymus, tonsils, appendix, lymph glands. Now, you need all the organs that you are born with, right? So don't randomly remove your tonsils or don't randomly remove your appendix. If you can keep them, keep them because they're part of the immune system, okay? Here we go. White blood cell. We're gonna give you what we call conventional lab values and these are what we call functional lab values, what I consider optimal, okay? White blood cell, 4,000 to 11,000, okay? Uh, functionally, 5,000 to 8,000. Neutrophils, 35 to 70% is your conventional lab. Functionally, 40 to 60%. Lymphocytes, 20 to 40. Functionally, 25 to 40. Monocytes, 2 to 8. Functionally, 4 to 7. Eosinophils, 1 to 4 below three functionally. Basophils, 0.5 to 1%, below 1%. Now, I'm gonna go over each individual ones when they're elevated or decreased, right? They're not perfect in terms of, you know, accurately diagnosing a problem. We're gonna give you clues as to what might be going on, and then if you need to, you need to follow up and do advanced testing to figure out exactly what the problem might be. But this will give you clues as to what type of infection you might have. Now, this board is written up and there's a lot of information here. So let's go uh, step by step, line by line. When you have a decrease in white blood cell count, your leukocytes, your total white blood cell count, if you have a decrease, it can be related to a chronic virus or a chronic bacterial infection, okay? Other reasons why it can be decreased, it's immune suppression like HIV, AIDS, autoimmune disease, lupus, decrease in bone marrow function or bone marrow suppression, antibiotics, pancreatic insufficiency, even a raw food diet could decrease your white blood cell count. Pancreatic insufficiency is about where you don't have enough of the digestive enzymes, and sometimes the white blood cells will take over that process of what we call phagocytosis, or breakdown of the foods. So white blood cell can be depleted if you have pancreatic insufficiency. White blood cells that increases, right, above lab levels, even functional levels, means acute infection, inflammation, allergies, even pregnancy at the late stages or giving birth, your white blood cell count can go up and it will calm down after you give birth. Tissue damage, muscle tissue, it can be surgery. So you can have an increase in white blood cell count. Increase in neutrophils can be related to bacterial infection, inflammation, okay? A decrease in neutrophils can be bone marrow suppression or viral infections. With viral infections, you're gonna have an increase in lymphocytes and a decrease in neutrophils at times. Lymphocytes, when they're increased, can be an acute viral infection, 
can be inflammation. When lymphocytes are low, it can be a bacterial infection or a chronic infection. It can be oxidative stress. Monocytes. It's elevated when you have end-stage infection. So you're getting better. And monocytes are things that come in and they clean up what's left over. So at the end of an infection, you can have an increase in uh, monocytes. Sometimes it's associated with intestinal parasites and benign prosthetic hypertrophy in men. Okay? Monocyte decreased could be related to steroids. Eosinophils that are elevated is related to asthma, intestinal parasites, allergies, whether it's food or environmental. Okay? Eosinophils that are low, steroids or adrenal dysfunction. Basophils increase with inflammation and intestinal parasites. So that's a lot of information, right? There's a lot of ups and downs here, but I'll step away so you can actually see this board and you can have an idea of what's going on. So here is the clinical pearls. If you see a elevation, let's say here, white blood cell count is elevated and you have an elevation of neutrophils, that is an acute bacterial infection. When you see white blood cell count with increase in lymphocytes, that's an acute viral infection. Oftentimes with acute infections, where you have elevation of white blood cell and neutrophil lymphocytes, you're gonna have the opposite with the other factor. So, if you have a bacterial infection, you're gonna have an increase in neutrophils, and initially you might have a decrease in lymphocytes. Same thing here, if you have an increase in white blood cells with increase in lymphocytes, that can be acute viral, but you can also have a decrease in neutrophils right in here. Number three, a decrease in white blood cell count with an increase in neutrophils. That's usually a chronic bacterial infection. The key here is that you have a low white blood cell count. So someone asked in the comments, how do you know if you have a chronic infection? You have a low white blood cell count with an increase of the marker that's elevated for the type of infection you might have. In this case, bacterial. Over here, you can have a decrease in white blood cell count with an increase in lymphocyte. That's a chronic, chronic viral infection. Okay? So these are just general rules, clinical pearls. Here's the last one. If you have an increase in monocytes, an increase in eosinophils, there can be a high probability of intestinal parasites. Okay? So this little section right in here can help you determine whether you have a, an acute or a chronic infection, whether you have a virus or a bacteria or a intestinal parasite. So this little chart right in here gives you an idea from a very simple blood test to determine if you have an infection. Now, like I said, it's not a perfect way of an analyzing this, but it gives you a great uh, first step as to discover what the underlying mechanism might be. So if you see that your white blood cell is low and you have slight elevation of neutrophils, there could be bacterial overgrowth. So you might have to go and discover or dig to see if there's bacterial overgrowth somewhere, maybe in the GI tract, right? Or if you have increase in monocytes and eosinophils, parasites, then you might have to do a stool analysis to see if there's infection in the GI tract. Usually monocytes will be greater than seven and eosinophils will be greater than three with parasites, all right? So that's my clinical pearl. I hope this was a, uh, a fun lecture and an important lecture, really, for all those people who have infection, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.